How are we all doing? I hope everyone's keeping well out there. So I've been getting a few more videos out than uh, in the last week or two, which is good. The uh, Ferguson movie star with the battery converter was a bit of crack. I enjoyed that. And yes, you never know when one of those bloody reefer caps is going to go. And uh, I might get around to change in the next five years or so. But uh, the aroma has uh, eventually left the workshop. Although it's probably lingering a little bit, but maybe I'm just getting used to it. So tonight uh, we're going to um, swap, do a CRT swap, hopefully, if all works out. I have this Vantage 14-inch um, uh, colour CCTV monitor. And I have this 14-inch Philips GR1AX or something, or whatever, which has had a hard life but has a good tube. Yeah, GR1AX. So we're going to try a tube swap. So I'll bring you in and show you the story here with this the um, cctv monitor is of course suffering from heavy uh ion burn on the screen as you can see there's dates and stuff burned in so it's had heavy use although the crt still has plenty of emission and that's one of the things that amazes me with these later crts the tubes don't seem to last forever and ever this thing sat on 24 7 for about seven years we're still, uh, we're still good to go here, you know, so, it's quite incredible really. Well, plenty of life left in the chill, but sadly the barn um, detracts heavily. So we're going to attempt a tube swap. So the first thing to do will be I'll put our uh, GR1AX down out of the way and we'll take the tube out of the monitor. The monitor is a bit bashed up and has had a hard life as well but um, it should tidy up okay for us. Now what we want to do is we want to do this in a way that makes life easy for us. And I reckon, hopefully we'll be able to get the tube out without too much uh, messing about. Because we don't go in for messing about here. Quick and easy is what we want. The metal box will have to come off, so a couple of screws here. Couple here. So we get on doing those. And you never know, some of these screws might even go back in. There's always a couple of spares left over, though, isn't there? Exciting stuff. I've loads of things here now to do videos on and I've a backlog of stuff really. Um, not to mention the workshop is absolutely crowded out at the minute with stuff. So we should have a busy winter ahead of us for those cold frosty nights in here. So I have to say I'm looking forward to it actually. Getting the head down and Getting a few things across the line that have been uh, waiting patiently for a long time. And I've quite a lot of stuff that I need to, need to revisit and finish off. I'm an awful man for leaving things half done and, you know, moving on to the next thing. You know, something shiny comes along and I start working on it. And then a week or two later, something even shinier comes along. 
Before you know it, you've crap half disassembled all over the place. You should be able to put some sort of a shape on it. Well, I was watching there uh, Chris all the gear no ideas video there this morning on the tiny spectrum analyzer and uh, it's amazing how they're able to make this stuff now so cheap so small and it's good you know I have one of those uh, nano VNA jobbers on slowly making its way from China but, um, when it'll actually get here as anyone's guess now, for those of you that are a bit nervous about EHT, we are going to make sure that the CRT is discharged. Generally, um, there's no issue. But it's no harm just to make sure that it is. So we're going to check. What we're going to do is we're going to short the EHT cavity to ground and we want to find a suitable jumper lead aha right I'll show you how we do this Screwdriver, lead, all right, ground. This will be more than sufficient. The acrylic uh, earthing strip. Don't want to really go down here on the circuit board or that on the ground there, just in case you have a flash over and it damages a nice air or something. Now I'd imagine this is dead, but you never know. So we just move in. There was no crack, there was no arc, there was no nothing. And as you can see, that is discharged. Super. So that's how we do that. One thing that can happen though is these can sometimes build up a charge all on their own when they're sitting not used. So it's just something to be aware of. Right, we'll uh, crack on. Do the scan coil plugs. And that's it. Um, apart from the grounding strip. I'll leave that. Undo the four screws to hold the CRT in place. So I wonder how many of you out there got winter projects now that you're just contemplating on starting now that the dark evenings are coming in. It certainly is uh, the time of year for it. I have to say I'm not too keen on being in here in the summer months. I prefer to be outside when the weather's good. And that's it. One tube out of the monitor. Put that down. Now we'll move this for now and we'll put our Phillips up 
and we'll take the tube out of him. See what it was doing. I'm making good progress so far. Now, the one thing we might run into trouble with, well, a little bit of trouble. There's the plug on the scan coils is probably different. We might need to swap them about. And mess about. But, um, other than that, it should be playing sailing. Now I did check that this had the um, same base as that one. And I believe it is an equivalent tube. Well, there's only one way to know for sure. So oh, Philips GR um, 1AX, probably day from the early, late 80s, maybe early 90s. There's no skirt on it, just a plain RF. Um, I did have it on, it is faulty. It's um, got a couple of weird faults. I think it had a tumble. So I hope the tube lights up though, all right. Um, doesn't appear to be any impurity errors or anything like that on the static so I'm hoping the shadow mask hasn't been displaced from its fall at that I would doubt very much Let's actually make sure that this one is the same and we're all good did you hear that? that bugger was charged up just as well I did Well, and it'll surprise myself. Um, they do say you should leave a strap on these all the time when you're walking on the book. I don't bother. Maybe I should. Obviously, walk on things like this at your peril. You'll see that the frame scan and the line scan are two separate doofers. Two separate lead outs and that. So we're going to have to do a little bit of messing. We don't want to swap the scan coils around if we can help it because um, it will cause convergence issues. That's where we meant for it to not fall out anyway. So, 
is obviously the frame help or chip here. I must have known so this is the frame. Put a nut in the frame. Just to make it easy for myself. So I know which is the frame and which is the line handy. There's our chill bell. There's the tail on side by side. Um, as we can see, yeah, the same. Hopefully it'll fit in all right. Um, so we'll put up the monitor back up now. Then, so as you can see, Phyllis are being a bit scabby with their line and frame coil wires. How light that is compared to this. Um, so we're looking good. All right, get rid of this. I'm running out of space here. Yeah. Big time. I need to. Big sort down. Long over jail. So we're looking good. A few of these squirrels in. Let's turn her up for a second and have a look at that. See how it looks. Oh yeah. Made for it. Looking good. Put a few screws in.
速啲啊！我嚟， mountain squirrels。Okie dokie, now we got to sort out our plug issue. So I'll do that. It'll probably take a while to figure out. And then we'll come back. Okay, so I had to mess around. I just I didn't want to do up the wires till I knew I had them the right way around and that. So we put on a test card. As you can see, it's looking good. Thank you Mikey405 for making these uh, test cards available to download. I think we might want to touch up the grayscale on that now to allow for the new tube. Mm, that's actually quite nice. Okay, what I'll do is I'll solder up the connections now to the scan, scan coils and we will set up the grayscale and the focus and what have you and we'll see how we're getting on there. Okay, so we'll have a fiddle around with this and see if we can get the picture a little bit better. We have a bit of an over scan and I don't think the scan coils quite match up with the line output transformer or what have you. There's no width control that I can see on this monitor but um, that doesn't really bother me all that much to be honest so we're going to turn off the colour for now we don't need that and we'll um, have a look at the grey scale make sure let's see contrast brightness there's a detent for the brightness so we'll set him to the middle and let's set the contrast for about the middle as well which is about there This is the sub brightness I'm adjusting. First, and then I'll go for the A1. Ooh, wow. Looks good. Focus. Exercise the focus control a couple of times throughout the travel. And we're aiming to get the X as sharp as we can in the middle. Yeah, I think that's about as good as it's going to get. Just adjusting the drives here now. Red could do again, touched up a little bit. That looks very good to me. Add in a bit of colour. I'd say that's as good as it's going to get. That'll do me. As I said, the width isn't great, but 
it'll do. Let's touch that right up a bit. There we go. It's good enough. And good enough is good enough. Okay, well thanks for watching. And I'll catch you again in the next one. Mind yourselves out there. Stay safe.